Good morning. Welcome to Game Changer Tuesday edition. We are day two, right up in the glass half full series. What's up? How you doing, babe? Good. Honestly, I was got sharing with Ezra. Cup. Oh, whoa. Yeah, you got Vinti Cups. You got back. a full coffee. That's Shortage awesome. is over. Shortage, Shortage is over. <laughs> Um, I was talking to Ezra. For whatever reason, this morning I woke up with my tank half empty. My day started kind of like off kilter. And um, at one point I said, okay, I have two hours to get my head in the game of the day. So what's interesting is that even if you start your day half full, you have the ability to fill it so that you can approach your day. I'm sorry, if you start your day half empty, you have the ability to fill it so that you can approach it full. I love how Diana, like, she works on these things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's like, she's like, got it down. She's like, I'm working on this. <laughs> I could tell, babe. That was awesome. That's like, you know, that's this morning. She, I had to tell was, myself that. Preach to myself today. Hey, that's, what you, that's what you have to do, though. There's the, there is in, therein lies the misunderstanding, right? That we think that believers or people who, have, you know, arrived in certain areas or someone that's maybe considered a, you know, want to, you know, follow their pattern or they've made it or whatever it is. You, you don't always wake up feeling like that. You don't always wake up ready to roll, but you're, you got to, you're faced with the decision and that decision. And, and, you know, the reality is the reason you know it's the decision is because you've, I know for my sake, I've made the wrong decision multiple times. I, I went the wrong way when faced with a decision. So you're faced with a decision where you can view the circumstances, feed into those circumstances and allow your day to get away from you. Or you can begin to change the narrative even before you see it. We walk by faith, not by sight. So if we walked by sight, we'd stay in bed. But if we walk by faith, right, we get up and we say, you know what, I'm going to call those things that are not as though they are. I'm going to begin to speak what God's word says. I'm going to begin to declare Psalms 118, right, 24, that this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Then I'm going to go into 25th verse. I'm going to say, God, save me and send success and prosperity this day. Amen. What a good day. Hey, I'm viewing it as a glass half full. So there it is right there. So you look at your glass and that's, that's the whole premise of this, this, this series. You look at the glass and it's just simply not full. Okay, so it's it's not full, and we look at it that way. But can I can I give you a different perspective? It's also not empty. That's good. So we look at the glass and we say it's just not full. You know, I'm looking at Mike's glass; it's full. I'm looking at Ezra's glass; it's full. Man, I look at Diana's glass; it's full. My glass is not full, right? I, I, I there's some things I want to accomplish, some things I want to do, some areas that I've really believed God for. There's some there's some ground I want to take. Right there's some there's some there's some growth that I want to see in this area of my life. I'm, I mean, I'm, I've been waiting for this significant other. Right, we've been believing for you know to, to have children, or I've been believing for my children to come to know the Lord. I've been believing for this financial breakthrough. I'm believing for any kind of financial breakthrough. Right, and you're looking at all these things and you're saying the glass is just not full in those areas. And I really want and desire a full glass. Well, I want you to I want to flip that over and say the glass is not empty. And you know, we have to be grateful. And I think that where, when you're, when you're faithful over the few, you'll be ruler over many. God will give you more. I really believe that concept starts with looking at what we have and then acknowledging it and building off of it, acknowledging it first, being thankful for it, and then building off of it. And um, so the glass is a believer is never half empty. It's always half full because it's on its way up. If, as a believer, if your glass is on the way down, then here's the thing. And sometimes that happens, right? Or, or we've been in pl- positions like that. Then when that's beginning to drain or the, the life is beginning to drain out of us, then we have got to stop, pause and say, okay, this is, there's a hole in this thing, right? There's a hole in the bottom of my boat. There's, there's some, something happening here that I need to, I need to figure out where this, where this life is going and I need to be able to plug it up. And uh, because when when it's fortified with God's word and fortified with with God's presence and the relationship with Jesus Christ, things aren't perfect. But I promise you that you'll stop leaking and will begin to grow. 
And so, you know, we talked yesterday, Diana, we, 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 we kind of, I'm going to stay in this general story with the Israelites, right? Where, um, you know, the, talking about the Israelites and how they were able to possess the promised land or they sent in spies. And we started it talking about the 12 spies that came back and all of them saw the same obstacles and they all saw the same opportunities. 10 of them came back looking at it going, our glass is not full. Right. I mean, there's a lot of challenges and obstacles and they begin to magnify the obstacles. And then you had two that came back and said, our glass is not empty. And they came back, acknowledged the obstacles, but they magnified, they magnified God. They magnified the opportunities. And so just as the Israelites were ultimately able to possess the promised land by the power of God, right? If you fast forward past that story, I mean, they obviously were able to right, possess the promised land. We can see him work through us right, in our lives, in our jobs, in our ministries. And by the way, your ministry, again, is not always in church. Your ministry is predominantly going to be in the area that you live and serve throughout the week. And so we're able to balance family, right? We're able to balance work. We're able to balance church. We're able to balance relationships. And then so we're able to see, you know, uh, you know adults change and young people learn and grow. And that's really difficult and it's almost impossible, especially to see adults change without the Lord. That's really hard, right? So every day we arrive at our place, right? Where's your place of ministry? Is your place of ministry, you know, at school? Are you a teacher? Is your place of ministry at a church? Is your place of ministry in an office complex? You know, our place of ministry right here Monday through Friday is on, you know, the top floor of a building, you know, where a lot of employees reside. And then sometimes when you go out into the common areas and you go to the restroom or you're leaving or you're going to lunch, you know, you might bump into other people and that could be, you know, those could be times where you are called to be a minister. So when you arrive every day, right, at your place of ministry, there's an opportunity, right? What God can do is, what God can do is only limited, right? There's no limits on what he's able to do. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So the only, the only limit, right? God, what God can do is only limited by our perspective, which is seeing his work in the, in the light of our ability, right? Or it's only limited by our attitude, which is unbelief that God can do great things through us. So it's limited by our perspective, right? And limited by our attitude. So what do you think? I mean, you know, I think that you know, I think that ultimately they possessed the promised land, but it it was it was because of the power of God. And if you look at it, ultimately, you know, I mean, the story is not really we're not really delving into the, the whole uh, the whole passage that whole passage, but we but if you look at that throughout it, Caleb and Joshua were, were the two that came back and said, "I know <clears throat> that we can possess this land. I know that we can take this land." And Joshua was given the mantle by Moses. So he led the, the people ultimately in. And then Caleb was the only one that was living besides Joshua that, you know, out of the people in the wilderness. Everyone else stayed in the wilderness because of their unbelief until their generation passed. And then Caleb, you know, an old man, but because he's, he's, he, he viewed it as an opportunity with the Lord, not an obstacle, he, he came into that place as an 85-year-old man and said, hey, give me my mountain. He said, God, God promised me my mountain way back then. And he, he took possession of, of the promise even at that age. So his glass, his glass, he had the fight half-empty syndrome or not full syndrome, possibly his whole life because it didn't come to fruition until he was 85. So I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think that comes down to perspective and attitude. Mike, say what you you posted on on the comments. I think there's something really important in that. Um, I posted that God is like the really really attentive waiter or waitress. When have you've ever we've all had one. We've all had bad experiences, but we've always had that one. You don't even realize your glass isn't even half empty, and they've already come back and refilled your water glass. But you know what is interesting about that? You don't notice it because you're focused on the conversation at the table yep. that you don't even realize it, but it's one of those times when you're really focused on, I need more drink and mm-hmm. it becomes irritating. So you're focusing on what isn't in the cup and you are more irritated versus entertaining where God has you right now. Yeah. 
and relishing and enjoying that moment, you won't realize what, you know, and from a world's term is half empty if you're focused on where you're at, Mm. you know, and then he'll come by unexpectedly while you're enjoying where you're at and not focusing on where you, where maybe you feel a world standpoint would have you lacking. He comes in and fills it and it's like, oh, I didn't even know he came by and met me there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's the way God works. I love, I love that because that's a real simple, you know, word picture because we've all had that. You know, the thing of it is, it is perspective in our attitude of how we approach it. This morning when I woke up, I wanted to, I got out of bed and I wanted to go get on the other side of the bed and start my day over. That's how it started. And, um, at some point, I had to make a decision. So that's another thing. It's perspective, attitude, and decision. No matter, even if I don't have everything that I think I'm entitled to, I'm going to still be thankful where God has me right now and what He has blessed me. Again, I mentioned that yesterday as far as you know, going back to how far you've come so that you can not be focused on what you don't have, but be thankful how far you've come. It's a lot easier to approach your day like, okay, this is a day the Lord has made when we're, we realize the blessings of the Lord of our life that, hey, you know, we have our family, we have a ho- roof over our house. There's a lot of different things going on. If we can see how far we've come, where we've started out, like, I, you know, Dave and I talk a little bit about our story, but um, when we got married, I was 17. I was expecting our first daughter. Um, not I, recommended. <laughs> definitely. We can write lots of books on what not to do. But here's the thing. Odds and statistics were against us. And if we would have looked at those things half empty, right? We started life half empty. Statistically, and from a world standpoint, if we would have stayed focused on that, I don't think that we would have gotten as far as we gotten, but we just were crazy enough and young enough and maybe a little dumb enough that we just believed that God was going to do it. And so even when we got knocked down and our glass glass was dumped over, there was a hole over it, or someone was stifling, stuck their straw. Or Diana threw it at me. (laughs) And broke it. (laughs) That's probably true. But even though we got back up and we didn't allow that to paralyze us. So I think here's the one thing. Sometimes we get so focused on what we don't have, we just get paralyzed instead of going, hey, you know what? This is what I do. I'm going to be, you know, I don't have, you know, am I, am I, being a good steward over what I have. I'm being a good steward with my job. Am I being a good steward with my time? Am I being a good steward in my relationships? Am I being a good steward with where I'm at? Opening the ability for God to come by and fill it when we're not even looking. Yeah, Dana Dana Dowd said, it doesn't matter if the glass is half empty or half full. Be grateful that you have a glass and there's something in it. And I think that that goes along with what you guys were talking about as well. But also that goes along with the fact that you know, and I'm thinking about you guys talking about the, the servers and, and the waiters and so forth. And um, looking at that as really, as long as you have a glass on the table, there is opportunity. You know, you, you know if you, you have to have a glass to have something poured into it. So if you're thirsty, the first thing they have to do is bring you a glass. Sometimes when you sit down, you know, especially if you go to some of these breakfast restaurants, things like that, they put empty water glasses on your table and when you when they set it and then of course along comes the server and then maybe pours water or what have you and so you know i and i want to look at numbers chapter 13 here just looking at this this whole passage we've been talking about i want to give you um i'll give you a couple of things four ways actually that we can um that we can help ourselves allow god to turn obstacles into opportunities for victory, because that's really what it's what it's looking at. We're talking about the glass half full. It's not just an optimistic thing. It's not like you know when you say, "Hey, that's a glass a glass half empty kind of person" or a "glass half full" kind of person. A lot of times, people are talking specifically about your attitude. They're specifically talking about you know that person is a negative person, or that person is always looking at things from a you know from a from a um, you know pessimistic standpoint or whatever. And that's part of it, but it's, it goes much, much deeper than that because it's regardless of how you walk in, <clears throat> you can be the most, some, there's been times where I can tell you, I'm not really a pessimistic person. I'm an opt- optimistic person, probably borderline idealistic, but like I'll come in and I'll see the glass always half full. But when I'm by myself, I mean, you're think I'm like, wow, he always sees the glass half full, <clears throat> but I can promise you when I'm alone with me, myself and I, that I'm, that I'm thinking about you know the reality and 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 the seriousness of the situation. So you know there you need more than just how you feel. You don't you can't just slap a smile on, walk in, and be viewed 
as a glass half full kind of person. That's just part of it. So there's got to be some things. I want to give you four actionable steps, right? Because ultimately what we need to do is allow God to turn the obstacles into opportunities, okay? There will be obstacles, but do you view them as obstacles impossible to overcome, impossible to get through, and, you know, it's like I stop there, I die there, or are they opportunities for victory, right? Because every victory, if it's really a victory, then there was a battle, and a battle is not an easy thing, it's a challenging thing. So let me give you the first, the first, um, uh, you know, first point here, right? Number one, we must realize that our ministry, okay? And keep in mind, when I say ministry, every person is a minister. If you're a believer, you are a minister. You you can minister to your family, to your coworkers. I mean, you are a minister. That's not, I want to say this because when it's said sometimes in church, and I think sometimes we just view it as like, okay, preacher says it, he's full-time, he's in ministry, He's. but I'm going to tell you, as someone who is in, slap in the middle of full-time business, okay, ministry is not primarily in a church. If you, if we only, if every person that got saved only in a church were the only ones to make it to heaven, wow, how, how, how about the, how about the countless billions of people Millions and billions of people, whoever have gotten saved over the over the the history of time, would not make it. So, so just think of that for a second. Perhaps you know somebody that gave their heart to the Lord, became a believer, and it had nothing to do with the walls of a church. So, so we need church. We need the community. But I'm going to tell you that your ministry, okay, is God's work. That's number one. We must realize that our ministry is God's work. And in Numbers 13. With the passage we were reading, right, one and two, it's evident that the work of the spies was directed by God, right? They were commissioned and sent by the Lord for the purpose of giving a report on the greatness of the land. God wanted to see if they saw the opportunity, not the obstacles. He wanted to see if they saw the opportunity. God wouldn't have, can I just say this? God's the author, but he's also the finisher. God wouldn't put it in your heart if he didn't know that it was able to be done with, with him. He called you to it, and he'll see you through it, and he'll get you to it. And, and so he, he commissioned these spies <clears throat> to give a report on the, on the greatness of the land that he was going to give them. They were not commissioned of God to determine whether they could actually do what God was commanding. God had already promised to give them the land. So as ministers, as believers, as Christians, we must realize that the people we work alongside of, right, the young people we teach, the, 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 the team that we run, the clients we serve, the family we are responsible for, the parents that we partner with, right, are all here by God's design, right? What I think is interesting, first of all, they told them specifically the 12, the 12 how, where exactly to go. They didn't just go explore land. He told them exp- specific instructions, go north, <clears throat> go here, mm-hmm. very specific. And then they went. And I, I believe even there was there is something intricate about that. And they seen the land. They seen the large grapes. They seen the milk and honey. Whoa. I mean, like I can imagine approaching those things like, oh, my goodness. But then they had a but, but there's these giants. Mm. And so I think we're all appro- we all see the good things. Right? God's doing good things in our lives, and we see the blessings of the Lord, and we're like, oh, man, this is awesome. But we get caught up on the but there's a giant versus letting the, the land flowing with milk and hun- honey and these oversized grapes, these, the, the blessings, like that, uh, that miracle, right? We get focused on the butts, and that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, some of us got some big butts. You know what I mean? Some of us got, some of us I'm have so some big, sorry. big butts and we need, and listen, and they're in our way. Let's just say that. Yeah. So, oh my God, this is crazy. You said it. I know I did. Um, but we get focused on those instead of getting, fo- staying, remaining focused like, hey, yeah, there's these, but I mean, God has these amazing blessings in front of us <clears> and not focusing on that. So again, that comes back to perspective and your attitude. Um, and then I think, again, I mentioned this yesterday, there was two. I think there was something intricate about that. There was two. So here's the thing. Make sure you have a partner, a two, 
a somebody else so that when you are approaching a land, maybe of, you know, a new venture, you, you know, maybe you're approaching the new year and you're trying to make changes, you know, you're trying to make life changes, you're trying to make financial decisions, you're trying to, whatever it is, make sure you have somebody to link your faith with. Because one could put a yeah. thousand to fly, two could put two thousand or ten thousand to fly. And here's the thing: there was someone that came back. What if there would have just been one? That one encouraged, right? And then they kind of settled the. I think they tried to settle, you know, the, the other ten. Like, mm. hey, yeah, but yeah. not here. Yeah, that's your butt, but my butt, God is greater. Mm. So instead of focusing on the negative side of these giants, yeah, but my God is greater than the giants in front of me, mm. and know that even though you haven't overcome that obstacle yet whatever that is know that your god is greater than the giants that you face yeah god god has you here there right where you are on purpose it's not up to you to decide if a person is is worth you know your effort or can be helped it's, a, it's really our mission to see how god is at work in their lives right and then co-labor with the lord in that work so let us never be numbered with those who decide what god wants done and that cannot that can't be done and so let me give you number two. Um, we must remind ourselves, right? This is number two, that we have been chosen by the Lord to serve him where he has placed us. One of the um, books that we read early on when we actually uh, were youth pastors, this is like way back in like 97, I don't know, 98, 95, whatever. Like we got married in 93. So this is a long time ago. But do you remember the book Bloom Where You're Planted? Mm. And there was a little That's book a one. and it was about armor bearers. And um, it was, it was, uh, it was, a, and it was called Bloom Where You're Planted. And, you know, so can I just say this, um, we must remind ourselves that we've been chosen to serve him where he's placed us. And so sometimes we read over verses like numbers, right? And, and, and we give them little thought, right? These men were, were you know, were uh, listed, were called to serve in this matter by the commandment of the Lord. You know, we, we are the men and women that have been called of the Lord to do his work in a place he's chosen for our lives. We can't just brush over these things. We have to look at it and we have to really learn from these stories. I, I think that really looking at it, we, we must never be light right, about our responsibility, or you want to write this down, this is good, right? Don't be light about your responsibility or our possibilities. Not only your responsibilities, but your po possibilities. You look at sometimes your responsibility, then you look at the obstacles, and you go, okay, I have this responsibility, but these obstacles. And, and I just, wanna, I just <clears throat> want us to come alive. Sometimes we look at the Bible because it's so far removed from you know, even culturally, it's just removed from what, like what we understand, technology and, and you know, and, and, and everything's just different. So we view it as just like, you know, this distant, uncultured, you know, like era. But the here's the reality. We preach on these miracles and we ask ourselves, where are these miracles? Where are these supernatural? And so maybe God doesn't need to move the same way in the exact same way he did then, right? Maybe there's not people walking around, you know, with, with, you know, with uh, leprosy, you know, I don't know. So maybe he doesn't need to do the same things the same way he did it. But here's the reality. Can it be possible that you can view the responsibilities that he's given you and then see the obstacles that you shrink back from and then say, hey, you know what? The miracle that God wants to do is turn that obstacle into a possibility, into an opportunity. I mean, not just figuratively. I mean, I'm talking literally move mountains. And so that your testimony, you know, I've been studying on uh, my my favorite, one of my favorite characters in the Bible. I've been doing a lot of telling Diana last night. I want to do a, a, um, a uh, I want to do a, um, Bible plan. a Bible plan and I want to do a podcast uh, series on excellence. And, you know, so it's going to be coming. I've been studying on it. It's just been something that's in me and it's centered around Solomon. Solomon's probably for years and years, uh, for at least over a decade, been my favorite um, business, you know, Bible character for leadership and business. And, and, um, and I, you know, it just looking at the opportunities in the in, in that God's placed there, the, the the possibilities. He wants to do something special through you in this modern 2022 that we live in, so that this world that's experiencing pressure from all sides. 
that they're not seeing ends meet and they, they don't know what's going on. They see change, but and they, they don't feel peace because they don't know the Prince of Peace. And so they don't know what's going on. And they're just, and they're just flowing through this. And there's anxiety going on. There's an epidemic of, of people that are supposedly healthy and at prime ages passing away, you know, just from pressures, you know, from, you know, when there's, there's looking into this now, but you know, there's the heart issues and, and anxiety and drug overdoses and suicide. There's pressures. There's no answers because we have the answer. So what I'm trying to tell you is the miracle, the miracle is when God does something and all of a sudden they show up and go, how, how is this all happening? How is there peace? How is there provision? And you don't go, well, yeah, I mean, let me just write this book right here because I've got the, I'm the guru with the answer. No, no. It's like if it, if it had not been for Jesus, right? But let me, let me really put some practical things down here and let me show you, let me help you. And then we can teach them. And those, that's the miracle that God wants to do today in the marketplace, in the classrooms, in, in this, in outside of the four walls of Sunday. Amen. So, so we didn't get to number three or four, but number, number two again is, is Diana, we have to remind ourselves. You don't have to tell, you don't have to ask if it's true. It is. You have to remind yourself that we've been chosen by the Lord to serve him where he's placed us. So when we get exhausted, when we get, when we get frustrated, we have to remind ourselves that we've been chosen. Sometimes it's, it feels like you've been punished, but it's, it's, you've been chosen by the Lord to serve him where you where you, he's placed you. He's orchestrated it. Mm -hmm. So he's orchestrated it. So make the most out of it, wherever it is. I think if you can get your, and this is something that I've been thinking about all morning, is the difference between obligated and committed. And so wherever you're at, where God has placed you, don't allow even the the obstacles get you in a mindset of being obligated to serve where at, wherever you're at versus committed. Obligated, you'll tap out when you're empty. But if you're committed, even if it's not going exactly the way you think it should, your commitment isn't based on what you're receiving in that. It's you're committed. So I think, you know, that's another thing to be evaluating. I'm not sure that's something that's been on my, my mind. This morning, I was committed to be somewhere at 5 a.m., not obligated. Obligation, I'll cancel on you. <laughs> I'm obligated and I'm going to cancel on you. Committed means no matter what, no matter how I feel, no matter how I think, no matter what I'm getting in return, I'm going to stay the course. Let's say good morning to some folks on Facebook and YouTube. Christina Scaff, good morning on YouTube. Lee Sudeo, what's up, man? We love we love you, brother. Miss you as well. Watching on Facebook. Um, Jeannie, thanks for, I mean, I'm sorry, YouTube. Thanks for watching on YouTube, guys. Uh, let's go over to Facebook real quick. Let's just call them out. Dumasani, man, faithful all the time. Thank you so much. You're such an encouragement. Dana Dow, Patrick Christie, Mike Stawiski. Thank you for watching. Bobby Mason, thank you for watching. Uh, Mike Chair, thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I saw a couple more people in there. Danny Cribbs, Danny Cribbs thank you for watching. And uh, Kevin Campbell. Kevin Campbell, what's up, brother? From Texas, man. Thank you for watching. And I hope you guys are having Andrew John, thank you for watching. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. You can put a comment in there. I'm just seeing some of the comments that are poking, poking out. And uh, look at Mike watching from Michigan, man. Awesome stuff. Is it cold there, Mike? How cold is it in Michigan? I bet you it is. I bet you it's uh, it's cold in Michigan. You're, you're like Michigan temperature. Michigan's a pretty big state, Mike. 11 degrees. 11 degrees in oh, Detroit. Oh. <laughs> Woo, that's cold. You know what? Post your temperature really quick. How about this? The coldest temperature that's posted watching right now on YouTube or Facebook, I'm going to give you. I'm gonna send you a Game Changer mug. All right, right real quick. I know we're, we're running degrees. out of time. <laughs> Mike said five degrees. Don't lie. Mike's not lying, but don't lie. Don't nobody post. Listen, I don't mean how cold you've ever been in. How cold is it right now? If anybody's watching from, uh, I remember um, someone that worked for us really quick. I know we're running out of time, but you know, it's not like we're on like NBC or something, but um, <laughs> they're going to cut into another show. But uh, I remember a long time ago, a guy that came to work for us from South Dakota, he came that we relocated him. Andrea said zero degrees. Wow. Whoa. I'd like to know, where are you watching from Andrea? And uh, so um, this guy came and he had texted me before he came. We transfer, uh, transferred, trans, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Moved his family down here from uh, South Dakota. And he texted me a dash board. It was negative 11 degrees. He had told me that you could get like sometimes there in South Dakota where you could dump hot coffee off the porch and before it hit the ground, it would turn to dust. That's cold. 
that's like a kind of cold that I've never experienced and uh, as a Florida boy. So we have zero degrees. Johannesburg is 80. Oh. 43 degrees in Arizona. <laughs> she said zero degrees. And it was 43. So, so far. It's the five. It's a five degrees. Anybody on YouTube? No, nah, I didn't see any Nobody? on YouTube. All right. All right. Cool. Mike? We're going to say, hey, we're going to send, uh, what's, who we're going to send the cup to? It's going Mike, to Mike, Mike Stowitzki. Stowitzki. We're going to send you a cup, man. Make sure you, uh, make sure you message 37 degrees in Jersey. Make sure you uh, message on Facebook um, your address where you want the mug sent, and we'll get it out to you today. Thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, if you guys would like, we have a daily encouragement text that goes out every morning that you guys can opt into for free. You can text the letters EZGC to 813-522-3356. If you're with us live right now on Facebook or YouTube, thank you so much for being with us. But if you cannot make it to the live streams, you can always keep up with us in two ways. Number one, go to YouTube and search Game Changer Podcast Live. Go to our channel, hit the subscribe button, and then also hit the bell so you get notified when we upload any new videos. And then you guys get the first come, first serve viewership. I don't know why I said that. That sounded really weird. I hate it. I hate everything. Ezra, when we go to posts, can you cut that? All right. I guess we're leaving my mistakes in. Um, if, you're li- if you guys would like, we are also on all of your favorite audio podcasting platforms. You guys can always subscribe to us. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whichever one you use the most, make sure that you guys subscribe to us on that platform. If you're listening to this episode or watching this episode on replay, you guys can always join us live every morning at 8.30 a.m. EST, Monday through Friday um, on Facebook or YouTube. Just search Game Changer Podcast Live and we will show up in your feed. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram and all social media. We post short bite-sized clips of podcast episodes, phone wallpapers, shareable graphics of quotes from the show, and much, much more. It's Game Changer Podcast Live on social platforms. Keep your eyes peeled this week. Our newest Bible plan is dropping on Friday, Red Light, Green Light. A five-day reading plan drops this coming Friday, so make sure that you guys check it out. When it drops, we will make an announcement that day as well, but it will be um, out on version and the Bible app, so make sure that you guys, when it comes out, subscribe to it, read through it, and then let us know what you think. You can always go back and check our podcast series on on red light green light from a couple weeks back as well but thank you all for tuning in today we hope you guys enjoyed this episode we'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning and on that note we out